Howdy y'all, this is Joe Schmo. Today I'm going to be discussing the changes from beta 0.21 all the way up to beta 0.23. Uh, beta 0.23 was made by me, and uh, beta 0.21 and beta 0.022 uh, was made by Michael. Starting off, uh, the level selector has been revamped. You can now select levels uh, in the old-fashioned legacy way of just selecting a level uh, like you would in a workshop, but now you can also select levels directly from the world map by simply double-clicking on them. Uh, uh, right out of the gate, you'll notice that there's quite a lot of changes. Uh, this is the super cool ROM hack, uh, so we are going to be doing a lot of super cool things today. I'm, uh, I'm going to start off by zooming in so we can see a little bit better, and I'm going to start off by showing the casing the settings. Uh, you might notice that this is using a nice sleek black GUI. Uh, you might want to use the old GUI, uh, which is the retro GUI. You simply go to the GUI and hit the style and hit retro, and now it looks like the old one. However, I wanted to not bring my retinas whenever I was uh, editing SMB3, so I decided that I should add the Dracula, which makes it so you don't bring your retinas. Uh, you can also select the mouse, and that was. Uh, I forgot to mention the GUI was uh, added in beta 0.23, so that is a new addition. Uh, the mouse uh, stuff up here, uh, so if you want to use right click instead of left click, or if you want to use your middle mouse button, that has always been there. Uh, the emulator uh, has also been there for a while. Uh, not a lot of people know about it, but it is a thing you can do. Uh, I'm going to bring that up in a little bit, but you can also select. So if you want to have a hammer bro, or it would be a Hammer Mario, you can just simply select down there, uh, you hit this play button up there. It's important to note, uh, while you have this emulator running, you cannot use the editor, you have to close the emulator in order for it to work. Uh, that might be fixed in uh, an upcoming version, but for beta 0 0.23, that is the case. Um, I'm doing this on a keyboard, so forgive me, uh, and, and half the keys do not work, but you notice that uh, I am indeed a hammer. Yeah, so I can't throw the hammers as I didn't make that hotkey. I had to like switch this over as I don't have an NES controller uh, connected at the moment. But the key thing here is that you are indeed a hammer bro. Uh, and then beyond that, we also have added the ability to, um, for you to edit the TSA, you might wonder what the TSA is. That is essentially uh, the tiles that make up the game. Uh, it looks like it's a bit tiny uh, on the screen, so I'm going to try to expand that a bit so everyone in the back can see. Okay, here we go. Now we got the uh, TSA, so these are all the tiles that compose the current tile set. You can select a different tile set. Uh, it just might look weird, uh, and we, and, and for, so there's like, this is the world map, um, and so on. Uh, we want the planes, as we are editing a planes level, so what we will do is, uh, we will simply change a bush, uh, and uh, make it a cloud instead. Um, right there, we made a little cloud, it's green, it's kind of weird, uh, and you finally hit save, close that, and I believe, that is the wrong button, sorry, hit level, and you hit reload level, and you see that it automatically updated. Um, from there, you uh, it acts just like a bush. It works exactly as you might intend it to. Uh, everything uh, will work just as it was before, even though it has completely been changed. And if you hit the play button with the emulator, and uh, we, or we still have the uh, hammer, uh, and, and it does change in the game. So that's nice. So you can do that for any tile set in the game. Uh, even tile sets you can't actually edit in the editor, you can still change. So if you want to 
go to the uh, TSA and uh, sorry it didn't keep its size so let me uh, try to explain that again okay so uh, you can even select the spade game uh, personally I don't know how the spade game works or what the, these TSA things do but I gave it as an option so anybody could try to do that and the world map as well uh, the palette is only for the palette only alone you can change the palette the palette doesn't affect the actual palette it's just there for uh, so it looks nice essentially uh, and, and to make it as best possible let's say you don't want to actually keep that change what you can do uh, if you kept it open um, you can simply hit the undo button so um, let me expand this again bada bing bada boom so I just simply click on the bush icons I'm trying to find the top of the bush I believe that is the top of the bush that might not be the top of the bush uh, it looks like I was right okay And just like that, we repaired the bush. So you hit save again. But let's say you don't didn't want to do that. Let's say you didn't want to do that. Well, congratulations. You can hit the undo button, and it works. Personally, I want to keep it as a bush. Uh, and, and if you have any questions about this, so let's say you forgot and you don't want to review the video, you can click hit this uh, question mark button, and it will tell you what any of these things do. So this is the block editor and so on. Um, I try to add support for that. That was added in, I believe, uh, beta 0 0.21. But I've continued that into more of the newer items of the editor. So you can just kind of click on things and it will give you a brief overview. I believe also if you like hover over things for a while, it will also provide hints. Uh, but you can always hit this question mark block and, and click things. And it gives some give a bit longer. Uh, explanation so what things do but the point is that you can just click around and find anything you ever need uh, from the editor uh, moving on I'm going to talk about the uh, rework of the level editor itself uh, you might notice the level editor is already looking a bit different and that is because the level editor now uh, dynamically loads all the blocks in as if they were the actual game so what that means is essentially the level editor creates the level exactly like it makes in the game so it uses RAM values uh, that perfectly align to the uh, level itself that would be displayed in the game and, and it might sound a bit complicated but essentially what it means is each tile in the game is represented with a byte uh, so the so this question block here is a byte in the game memory and essentially uh, the same thing is represented here and we simply draw those bytes uh, so you can understand what they mean. And where that becomes relevant is some objects or generators that depending on what you want to call them can change the bytes underneath them. Uh, so a tricky uh, situation for a while has been the uh, the block platforms that extend to the ground uh, they typically didn't show up properly in previous versions of foundry and in this version we have finally overcame that issue by making dynamically uh, essentially it works just like it would in the game uh, I, I literally read the code for the block uh, the block generator that extends to the ground and I made it work exactly like it would uh, in the editor so if you move this around you notice some weird things happen and that is because they literally happen in the game I don't make the rules on how all of these work that is for whatever reason that's what the that that's what they wanted to happen with this block uh, but now you know and, and the purpose of the editor is to tell you how the things work I uh, so uh, the goal uh, for dealing with generators and making them look 
prettier. Uh, it is an addition in the um, uh, the goal is to make an addition uh, shortly uh, once we get add plugins, uh, which is the next version, uh, beta 0 0.24, uh, to make it so you can uh, actually add blocks uh, into the game uh, or generators using a 5 byte object. And that 5 byte object will allow you to simply uh, create whatever block you want. So if you remember the uh, TSA editor, so in case you forgot, essentially what you will do is um, let me make this a bit bigger. Essentially you can select any of these tiles. Uh, you just select one and it shows up in the level. So that's the idea for that one. A few other tiles that uh, also got changed uh, were the bushes. The bushes also load dynamically. It's very hard to show, but you kind of see it here that like the, the tiles show up. The reason for that is uh, is so the tiles do not. Um, so basically, it, it's always green, so you don't have like a, a the background showing through the bush. That'd be kind of awkward. So that is appropriately shown in the editor now. Um, I'm gonna have to load another level to showcase the other blocks. So I believe in the tower part one. I give it a second, it needs a little bit of motivation. Uh, there's the warp zone. I'm gonna get into that a little bit later. Uh, but for the moment, I'm gonna turn that off and you notice pillars now correctly show what they look like as because they are also dynamically generated so if I move this around uh, you see here uh, the pillars do eventually figure out uh, how to act like a pillar and this showcases how they would act in the game now I don't make the rules for how pillars act as I stated before, but this is essentially what they do. Uh, you might wonder why uh, a pillar like this would do that. Uh, and the reason is, is because this block right here, I imagine uh, it somehow messes with the tile. It's just how they check. I, I went through the code again and I uh, took the painstaking process of making sure the pillars load however they would in the game. Does the same byte transactions as it does in the game, and it allows it to dynamically generate, as you see here. I believe there are also a few other ones. Uh, I believe the uh, the background now shows uh, more properly as to the game. So if I go to uh, select level and um, select uh, I believe 2-1. Uh, you give it a little bit of motivation. And the pyramids. The pyramids uh, beforehand didn't really show properly. Now they do. Um, they just kind of take over everything. That's just kind of how they work. Um, that's how our uh, pyramid works. They are also dynamic. So anything that really... Uh, looks around its surroundings are a dynamic block and those have been made to I believe I've fixed all or all but one of these generators that are dynamically looking around the level and that's just so the editor displays things as accurately as possible and and now we will get into the settings, so you may have wondered why your editor may have looked a bit differently than mine, and that is because of the view settings. So when you start off the foundry, it will look something like, give me a second, something like this. Um, it might look a bit weird at first, but essentially what this is saying is uh, there is a view for seeing uh, how you can resize something. So you can simply disable that and now it looks a bit more normal. You might wonder why the background went away. Uh, 
I decided to make it so you didn't have to look at the background if you didn't want to. This is so you make prettier pictures or if you just think the background is ugly. You can remove the background uh, color and it, it just makes it look nicer sometimes. That's that's the entire reason that exists. Um, well, you know, might as well give you the option. Uh, there is also the grid lines. Personally, I don't like the grid lines. And I believe if I... Yeah, so this pipe, you see this, these, I don't know how well they are showing up on video, but there are lines, and these have been added in, uh, I believe, PETA 0 0.21, and that's just so you can view the jump zones easier. You can turn those off, and they completely go away. You might also notice there's the indicators. Uh, some people like the indicators, some people don't. Uh, I know some people want to put the indicators inside the blocks. Uh, my solution for that is in the upcoming uh, beta 0 0.24. I just want to use plugins instead. Uh, so you can just simply choose what indicator you want. And you can even make your own custom uh, overlay for the generators instead. But for the time being, all, the only option you get is if the items are in the blocks or if they're not in the box. Um, we also have uh, the warps again and Mario so we go over here you see Mario shows up I believe that was added in beta 0 0.21 or beta 0 0.20 by Michael uh, Mario shows up, so you kind of know where Mario is. So if I edit the, if I edit the header, I don't believe I can make this bigger. So sorry if it didn't show up well on the video. Um, you simply go to the, you go to Mario, the Mario tab, and you simply change it, and the Mario automatically dynamically loads where he shows up. There we go. Uh, and I believe these have also been dynamically changed a bit more so you can see them a bit better. Um, the, the idea here is that you see the uh, general generator uh, and get a nice little picture from them as some people uh, don't really uh, remember where everything is. Uh, unlike a uh, workshop, the goal is so you can just click on everything and just kind of be like, oh yeah, that that's a thwomp. And I middle click, uh, I, was, I had an object selected, uh, but I can just drag a thwomp. Uh, the thwomp really didn't want to exist today, so there is no thwomp. Uh, you can simply drag the thwomp out. I believe you can Amy select. Okay. It's just not going to work for me on video. That's nice. Um, but yeah, you can just view the, uh, uh, the different aspects of the editor. You can also disable certain things. So if you want toolbars to look better uh, or if you don't use a certain tool you can just disable it. Um, so like that, that's the uh, that is the compact object selector. It turns out the compact object selector isn't very compact and it takes up a little bit of space so if you want that real estate back you can disable it. You also might notice on the right hand side under the uh, tile information so that is all the stuff that whenever you drag uh, whenever you drag objects this stuff changes automatically. Um, this showcases that those changes respectively into the uh, at, uh, as with the tile so you can edit it just like you can in a workshop. Uh, we just provide additional ways for you to edit those blocks.
And here you can also see the size. So this is the size as when the level loaded the level. Uh, there is a known issue that whenever you save the level and then reload the level, that it will go and revert to the uh, new level size. So let's say I made a new level with only 250 bytes. And this one started out with 450 bytes. It's going to say that there's only 250 bytes left because Foundry found that level is only 250 bytes in size. And that is intended. Uh, it's very hard to tell where levels start and end in SMB3. Uh, there is a solution in the making that would eliminate level size in general, uh, but it also requires the plugins in order to work. So that's a down the line feature. But the entire code is already there to use, it just needs to be implemented into Foundry using plugins. So let's add the uh, compact object viewer back. I'm not going to discuss these object viewers too much as I believe those have already been discussed in the previous videos uh, from Michael and it was added uh, quite a while back. So for simplicity, I'm just going to talk about that. If you want to watch those, uh, just watch the video on our GitHub page so, or you can just click right here and the feature video on YouTube that should bring it up. And um, from there, I'm going to go to a different level. Yeah, I'm going to go to, I'm going to select level. Now I'm going to go to level 1 for. Uh, and you might notice something looks a bit different. There's this line directly goes through the screen. You may wonder what that is. That is the auto scroller. Uh, we found that working with auto scrollers were quite annoying uh, in SMB3, and we decided how could we make this uh, less painful. And what we decided was a way uh, just showing you where the screen is. So this blue outline, um, yeah, the blue outline, I uh, see. So uh, it sh shows where, you, where the uh, screen will be. So this is just a straight auto scroller, but you can also go to the level and then hit edit auto scroller. So you can just disable and enable an auto scroller just like that in the level. Um, and then you can choose different auto scrollers and they just kind of show you the different ways that the auto scroller moves about. And this is just so you can uh, just see what what each auto scroller does. I refer you to I uh, get a better estimate of where the auto scrollers go. As um, it was kind of tricky in the past to know where like an uh, airship auto scroller was going, you kind of had to like do this tedious process of playing a level over and over. Now you can just kind of say, oh, it's kind of in this area and just follow up along the path, generally speaking, and it works out. Uh, you may wonder what these red and blue dots are. So the red ones, uh, they uh, change dynamically, so it's more curvy, and the blue lines are just a uh, linear path, um, which is just a straight line, essentially of where the auto scroller goes. All you gotta really understand is the stuff inside the blue is the auto scroller and the things not inside the blue are not the auto scroller. As you notice, this shows generally the path that you would see whenever you're playing the game. Anything outside of the blue lines you will never quite see. Uh, also, I want to uh, mention that we do have an auto save feature. I'm doing this in a way right now that it won't actually use the auto save uh, due to um, this being a work in progress version of the beta. But just know if you accidentally X out now and have been doing a few edits, that the game will automatically, or not the game, the editor foundry will automatically figure that out. And that was added in beta 0.22 by Michael. And lastly, uh, I wanted to showcase a few other things that we've added. Uh, we have a view generators. 
So this isn't uh, very um, uh, useful yet, but uh, just so you can kind of view the, um, let me go back to zero one. So it kind of just showcases each of the objects, kind of what they look like. And we felt, you know, maybe you just want to look around, see if there's anything new. And if you don't want to use the objects or like worry about editing the level, that, that is an option now. And we also added the view palettes. So this is all the palette sets. So if you want to select a certain palette, so let's say I want palette five because it has that nice dark blue in the second palette, I can go to the level the level edit editor, uh, level edit editor editor that that is a uh, tongue twister right there and you can simply go to the graphics and you select object palette 5 oh that, that's in the palette sorry and now you get that dark color that you wanted And with that, I believe we've discussed essentially all the changes that were made in the editor. So you can obviously use the world map and so on. Uh, there's there's been a, quite a lot of changes uh, over the last year. Uh, uh, that's about the time frame that uh, beta 0 0.21 to beta point uh, 23 has been been on. Uh, quite a lot of changes. Yeah, you notice the indicators for the pipes and so on. I'm also there. Um, I believe uh, before I go, I also wanted to mention that like I believe these were having a problem beforehand, and that was fixed. Uh, the like holes in the ground were not showing up properly, and that was fixed in the most recent version, uh, but a uh, uh, zero point twenty three. With that, this concludes the uh, editor showcase and feature update for Foundry. Stay awesome, be awesome, see you next time, Joe Smo.